we're joined by um, Lucinda Colucci from the Blackdown Ridge Vineyard, just 20 minutes from here on the other side of Hazelmere. Um, thanks for joining us today and um, um, shortly we're going to take a look at some of the wines. Um, we'd just like to say a really big thank you for our visit the other day. It was just gorgeous, gorgeous. My pleasure, my pleasure. We had fun, didn't we? It was really good. We really enjoyed it, all of us. So if anybody out there is looking for a, a good um, way to spend a few hours, I highly recommend visiting the Blackdown Ridge. Thank you. Um, <laughs> beautiful. Um, so would you be able to just tell us a little bit about the vineyard and the role that you play there? Yes, of course. Uh, my, my, my job title is Business Development Manager, but um, it's a small team, so I don't really have that many people to manage. It's kind of just me. Um, so, so that's good fun. Um, I've worked there now for six years. Um, it was, the, the vineyard, the idea was first thought of in 2010 very spontaneously over a nice boozy supper one evening. Um, the more wine they drank, the better the idea seemed. So 2010, the idea was born. Um, they called the experts who recommended that they should plant predominantly grapes for sparkling wine. So we have Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier and Chardonnay, which would go into a classic cuvee in, from Champagne region. So we've got those and we make it the same Champagne method but always to be called English sparkling wine rather than champagne. And uh, we also have a variety of grapes for still wine, which is quite unusual for a small vineyard. We just have 10 and a half acres planted to vines, um, a little bit of land left to plant more if, if we want. And we also have our own winery. So we're more or less fully self-sufficient. It's brilliant. <laughs> Lovely. And um, what are the main challenges you face um, having a vineyard here in the UK? Gosh, the main, we face a lot of challenges. There's a lot can go wrong between now and harvest. Um, at the moment, with the weather being a little bit volatile, that's a little worrying. Um, so we, we've already got through the risk of frost. We managed to get through that perfectly okay. We got a little bit of leaf damage with the hailstorms that occurred, um, but not too bad. The next thing that we're going to face is what the weather will be like for pollination time. So the vines are, the flowers are about to burst. Um, vines are wind pollinated. So if it's too windy, that'll be not good. If it's not windy at all, that's disastrous. And if it rains heavily, it'll just dampen the pollen down. So that's risky. Then we have the danger of the birds eating it all. We've got deer in the wood. The badgers like to come in. Biggest problem of all we faced in the last few years has been wasps. So they'll they'll sort of damage the skins of the grapes and then infections can set in. Um, we also have to, because it's a damp climate generally in this country, we have to be very careful of mildew problems. So the forecast now for the next few days is very wet. So that's a concern. It can damage the very young leaves already. Oh, goodness sake. Oh. The full range of challenges there that to face that's um, absolutely has anything been particularly successful any particular successful grapes or or ones that haven't done so well that... yeah we've got a um, a very unusual grape at our vineyard we've got um a, a red wine grape called triumph and that has made a really extraordinary red wine um i think as far as i know we're the only people who make a single varietal triumph in england and it's full bodied, it's got a great finish, it's got an amazing nose. Um, Lovely. It's a really, really beautiful, smooth and velvety wine. So yeah. that's probably the one that I'm most proud of. Um, but we have won um, an International Wines and Spirits Outstanding Silver Award for our sparkling white wine, Primordia. Love that. Wow. Um, so we, we have a range of the uh, sparkling white and sparkling rosé. We've got our beautiful red that I've just spoken about. And we also have Sauvignon Blanc, um, which is the sort of grassy and nettly notes you might expect, but it also has quite a strong um, green capsicum scent on the nose and maybe a sort of a hint of sort of sugar snap peas. It's, it's a really rather lovely wine. So that's crisp and fresh and gorgeous. We also have um, a still rosé on the estate, which is an interesting one. Um, some people sometimes look at it and think that because the colour is quite pink, that it's going to be sweet, but it's not. It's crisp and dry. 
and actually mm -hmm. maybe more complex and more interesting than some of the very pretty pale blush roses that we all love to hold. You like um, I, surprised by that when we tasted it because you're expecting something else completely and and um, and you get this really dry crisp apple flavors with a little bit of grassiness in there it was it was lovely really nice. and a lot of strawberry a lot of strawberry yeah. hints so um that one is is and because it's quite complex you can have it with really um a a, a stronger tasting food so maybe something like a Thai, thai green curry or yeah. a, a dal or something like that would be lovely that's that's wonderful thank you very much lucinda for joining us and um um we will be drinking a lot of your wines in the very near future <laughs> that's that's lovely to hear thank you so very much thank you bye. so much take care bye bye, bye.